Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 33 of iGel Weekly. I'm your host, Andy Whiteside. I've got uh, Chris Feeney. Chris, we're doing a we're doing one of our corporate blogs this week, right? We do the community blog one week, and then we do a corporate one the next week, right? That is correct. This is a Larry Bird blog today, number yeah, 33. Larry. So, are there any other? There's got to be other famous 33s. What, what, what was? Uh, I want to say was Patrick Ewing 33. He might have been. He might have been. And I mean, there's only so many numbers you can use, right? I think uh, was like when we were kids was Tony Dorsett 33. Uh, let's see. I was a Redskins fan. I should know this. Um, I'm going to go with Tony Dorsett was, gosh, well, he was a Cowboys guy, so I really don't care. So, <laughs> but he could have been a famous 33. Anyway, I'll, I'll share just a brief story. I don't know if this is appropriate to share or not, but uh, three months ago, my family and I went to Southern Utah, Las Vegas, and Southern California. And uh, we were standing on the strip in Las Vegas in front of the Bellagio, and we had waited a really long time for the, the, the show that we could be right in the middle and take a good family picture. And this guy walks up, and I hear him behind me, like basically making threats to me and my family because he wants a picture with nobody in it. And finally, uh, the agent, his agent walks up and says, my, my star athlete, um, you know, Las Vegas Raider, uh, just acquired him so-and-so. I, forget, I didn't know his name at the time. He needs your family to move because he wants to take a picture with nobody in it. And I was like, ma'am, I've stood here for 30 minutes. We're going to stay here until the end of the show, and then he can take his picture. We'll be glad to move at that point. Uh, and so last night I'm watching Monday Night Football, and this, this guy gets a penalty for taunting or, or whatever it was. And I'm looking, I'm like, that's that guy. That's the guy that threatened us on the uh, strip in Las Vegas. Um, no wonder. And it, it just so happened one of the other players on the team that I kind of know of uh, was standing beside him at the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I went into all that just now. Professional sports and, and I, I grew up a big pro sports fan, but I could take it or leave it at this point. Yeah. I'm sure we've all had moments where we've met that that person either in their prime or or maybe uh, retired or, or something. But uh, I'm trying to think of if I've had any stories like that, it'll probably come to me right as we finish up this day. But, yeah. but we do want to highlight, I would say, uh, a newcomer to the IGL Ready program. Um, well, maybe, maybe I can make a transition for us. So it, 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 people are people and people are going to do what they're going to do. But uh, in this uh, particular podcast, we're going to talk about what ruggedized, uh, you know, maybe thicker skin. So as you go through life, whether you're dealing with a TSA agent, which was yesterday's story for me, where I basically got cussed out by a TSA agent just because I asked the question, um, or you're dealing with a professional athlete, we got to have we got to have thicker skin. And I think uh, we got to be more rugged. That's what we're talking about today, right? Taking the beauty of the iGel solution and putting it on ruggedized, ruggedized is that the right way to say it, ruggedized uh, hardware. Yeah. Well, I think that the story there we were just talking about before we hit record, you know, technology kind of crosses boundaries. It doesn't really matter what vertical, I mean, technology is going to be used all over. And so in this particular case, we've got the opportunity to highlight a, a, a new iGel Ready partner that focuses uh, on a particular segment uh, where they need some special, they have some special needs uh, that can handle the rough and tough environments that they operate in, uh, and so we're talking about our friends from On Logic, and uh, they have uh, joined the iGel Ready program this year, uh, and they have very specialized uh, devices that we'll uh, highlight a little bit on today. We got a little bit more detail on the partner showcase, um, yeah. but if you're not familiar with them. Uh, check them out at on logic o n logic l i l can you spell l o g i c dot com so um so so chris i think the the story here right is um hardened uh, reliable hardware with smart reliable hardened if you will or for sure uh software coming together so that uh, you're protected against the elements as and the uptime and the potential you know ransomware piece all at the same time, right? It's that it's like having that security system at home that has the cameras in the right place, right? So you can keep an eye on what's going on. You have the sensors in the right place, and you have the software that that knows how to keep you alerted um, as well as make the right next steps when needed. Yeah, no, it is. I think you, you it kind of hit it right there, right? The combination, the coming together of devices that are can take a beating, essentially, if you want to 
go that route. Uh, but also have very uh, focused security uh, resistant in a sense uh, to those attacks, uh, obviously configured correctly, uh, but bringing those two together for environments where they really can't afford a lot of downtime. Uh, and so that's kind of the story that we're going to tell today. Well, and Chris, I'm reading ahead to this next section here that talks about uh, IGEL out of the office and on the edge. Uh, I guess maybe we're talking about the, our laptops in play here, as well as other uh, endpoint devices in a world where, you know, the edge and getting work done is everywhere, including, you know, the ruggedized need. Am I saying that right? Ruggedized? Ruggedized? Yeah, I think that's, I mean, I first heard that term, uh, I don't know, several years ago when I came across Panasonic and their rugged uh, tough book was the name of their, their the, uh, the product name. And it was you know, designed for uh, operating in, you know, I mean, they, they sold into military environments, uh, fanless, everything was enclosed. I mean, they could take these things in the desert, uh, they could take it into dusty places and, and cars and stuff. In some cases, there was telling stories that laptop could take a bullet and still be operational. I mean, I, I never saw that personally, but uh, that's kind of the, the general idea. And and the sand, you know, the uh, the SSDs were fairly new at the time, uh, I think. So I'm going back into the, I would say, late before 2010. I'll just say that somewhere in that uh, 05 to maybe 2010, 2012 range, and something it, like that. Would it be fair to say back then that being protected against the elements and other things was a physical property uh, more than it was a like a software type thing at the time? Yeah, because pretty much all these things were running Windows uh, XP, Windows 7 uh, at the time. And uh, I mean, there was, you know, Linux on the endpoint. Uh, you know, first of all, uh, things weren't in the cloud. You had to have uh, localized apps installed, that type of thing to access resources. And so it just was, is, you know, that's what it was. And so that's, um, but they could take these into hospitals, you know, and other environments uh, where, they would just be abused in some cases. I mean, uh, if you ever walked around in some places, you see these keyboards that, you know, looks like they've been through the uh, state fair or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> some places. So, uh, but yeah, so what we're talking about today is uh, it, those business environments. Uh, I know early in my career, I, I spent some time going into uh, work for a company that was, uh, uh, they did asphalt and uh, they had these asphalt plants and we were replacing and basically giving them a WAN, uh, bringing them into the world of Outlook email and that type of thing. But we had to go into these, uh, I would say, uh, field offices where they were close to their asphalt plant and you start to get into some of the, the devices that you're replacing. Mm -hmm. And you pull these suckers out and you're like, holy smoke, put a mask on, so much dust and uh, did you bring the air, can of air? Well, we're going to need three of those, you know, that type of thing. So, well, let's, let's uh, use that to talk about this next section that, that talks yeah. about historically what it meant to be hardened or uh, rugged. Um, it talks about fanless and, and, and ventless design, right? Trying to keep that, uh, that dust out of the device and off the, um, key essential electronics. That's exactly right. So I uh, hit upon a few bullet points there. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I think the, the ruggedized kind of uh, focus uh, was to have a spinless disk, so solid state drive, um, but, uh, but no fan, no, not pulling in any kind of dust, uh, very quiet, of course. Um, and so, um, but also some of the components, you know, it, it's uh, uh, obviously need to be able to plug things in, but also be able to plug them in and maybe close up that, uh, that connection in some cases. Um, and obviously built for life, built for, built for a longer life, I should say. Um, so Chris, I don't think I did a good job introducing this in, in industrial and rugged thin clients for IGEL anywhere. That's the, uh, that's the name of the blog written mm -hmm. by, uh, Michael Walsh, Walsh from, uh, September of this year, 2021. Uh, the, the properties are listed here, fanless and ventless. We covered a uh, completely solid state, no, no actual physical moving parts, right? That's what we really want. So solid state would be part of that story and, and has been for a long time. However, now it's extremely, uh, commoditized and, and reachable in cost, right? Yeah. 
And if you think just uh, just above that paragraph, uh, I mean, where are endpoints being found today? I kind of, I mean, forklifts, trucks, shipping containers uh, with Wi-Fi kind of extended the the reach yeah. uh, of some of these places. Um, I think about, uh, I'm sure at the, uh, if you read some of the more recent stories, you know, sitting off the port of Long Beach, I think it is, or Los Angeles, there's 40 something shipping vessels that have not yet been able to unload. And so shipping is just sitting there. I'm sure they're using technology to help process a lot of these uh, shipments as they come off. Um, but uh, it, you know, environments like that, where they have to be able to, you know, withstand, I'm sure, various things that are going on as, as containers are being unloaded. Yeah. Um, and obviously uh, a long battery life if you're running uh, off a uh, off battery. Uh, so those, or if it's on a cart, you know, maybe you're driving around in some kind of uh, cart or forklift or whatever. So that's the type of environment where the, these uh, devices would be used in a lot of respects. So, well, think about this for a minute. Um, I literally have a rubberized battery case on my all glass, I think, iPhone. And yesterday I had to take it off to charge for a few minutes. And uh, I, it, it's like this subconscious thing that I, I, I need to get the case back on this iPhone as quick as I can. Cause I know I'm going to drop it. Like I know it's coming. Even if I try and focus on not putting it in a, um, a precarious situation, um, I, I, it happens. Uh, and I, I, you know, the, the idea that the device itself, which I don't know why these things haven't been more ruggedized, but I think it's really just a matter of the, the beauty of it. People not wanting to impact the way it looks. Yeah, I'm not aware of at least Apple designing a uh, a ruggedized iPhone, but certainly there are cases that you can enclose them in that have gone there. And then even further down was interesting in this blog, it kind of highlights there are some standards that uh, that you can build product to um, if you're going to sell into certain industries, uh, and in particular uh, military uh, area where they're going to be on ships in the field probably in a Humvee or some other type of thing like that, where they're going to need to be uh, reliable. And certainly if, you know, all hell breaks loose, uh, uh, be able to withstand that type of uh, beating and, uh, and still keep on running. So well, I mean, think about it. It was the ugly yellow Nextels that started a lot of this. Uh, but in the long run, they didn't win out. I'm, I'm talking about the Nextel, you know, the, the push to talk stuff. Um, and I think the the contractor guys that that carry those things in the beginning that we were all envious of at one point, um, they didn't care what it looked like. In fact, they wanted it to be ugly and they wanted it to be yellow where they could find it if laying on a workbench somewhere. Uh, but then when consumerization hit, you had to find a way to get rugged and beautiful all at the same time. You know, it's funny because if you look at our showcase, uh, their color on a lot of their devices actually happens to be yellow. And I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure there's a reason for that. While they did that, uh, so we've got two devices that are highlighted from OnLogic. Uh, one is an ultra small fanless powered thin client. Yeah. Hey, Chris, before um, you do that, let's just hit yeah. let's just hit these bullets. So, ability to withstand sure. harsh conditions, really hot, really cold, indirect sun or direct sun. Uh, if, I'm, if my iPhone, which is black with a black case, gets near the dock and out in the sun for you know five minutes during the summer, it's it's gonna it's smart. It shuts itself down, but I know it's gonna have it's not going to be happy, and, and I'm doing probably long-term damage to it. Highly configurable, uh, both physically and software. I think that's, but in this case, physical. Uh, extensive mm -hmm. I/O options uh, and long, long life. Those are all the bullets they call out to what it means to be a, a ruggedized uh, industrial device. Um, but now you were transitioning us into a couple of devices that I'll click on here on the screen. The first one being uh, which one? Uh, the uh, let's see here. I picked up on the uh, other so, one here. So on Logic, uh, it looks like an IGL 300 is one of them listed here. Yeah. So that one, uh, what's interesting about this one is that uh, uh, it, it, there are multiple options in terms of, you know, the, what you want with the hardware uh, before it gets shipped, that type of thing. But uh, what's really cool is, um, as you can see on the product page, uh, you go through some of the pictures, what some of the options are. Um, uh, chipset. Uh, you can see uh, when it comes pre-imaged. Uh, you can see what the peripheral support is on the back. 
Um, and what's really cool is uh, I highlighted the fact that these could be in vehicle use, uh, you know, leveraging wireless from 4G, for example. Uh, so you could put these in uh, transportation vehicles, maybe, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, shipping containers, refrigerated ones in particular, because if you're going to be in there, you're going to be uh, in an environment where it's going to be cold. Yeah. Um, uh, they can obviously be visa mounted. They can be mounted in, in different uh, configuration settings, uh, but just kind of purpose built to handle that environment. Uh, you can see the operating temperature range, negative 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, I think that's pretty low <laughs> and uh, 70 degrees Celsius. So I need to translate that into Fahrenheit, but I would say that's quite a range when it comes to cold and hot uh, base temperatures. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, this, these are, are very much purpose built to handle um, uh, the, the different places that you might uh, uh, consider. And, and for those listening, I mean, you know, just another example of um, a company that has a, has a, a very much a, a focus on supplying uh, hardware in this case uh, to a very unique uh, industry or industries where they have specific requirements. And, um, and then I comes in and be able to through here and they have a ton yeah. of form factors. Yeah, they do. And it's, uh, it's quite a bit. And uh, there's, there's two specific models thing clients, uh, but there's quite a bit more that, I mean, as you're going through the list, um, obviously, you know, more than meet the requirements to run iGel OS. Uh, and uh, certainly if somebody's interested in something that uh, that's on this website, you could probably have a conversation with OnLogic to find out um, if any other devices could be officially uh, validated, I guess is the proper word. But uh, Chris, in theory, from, you guys have yeah. a couple of supported ones, but I guess in theory, if they're all x86 based, you kind of could, there's a chance all of these would work eventually once they got certified, right? Yeah, I think a lot of it is just based on maybe customer demand kind of starting here and then expanding. So if a um, customer has one that they want to use, a specific form factor, uh, they could get with their iGel uh, partner as well as iGel and, mm -hmm. and get and get one of those tested and, and, and officially get it supported. Um, or they could roll the dice because, again, iGel is Intel uh, Linux based and is going to probably work on all this stuff. Yeah, you just look at these specs. I mean, obviously, what's nice about being a part of the Agile Ready program is they actually have a test kit that they could use. Uh, if there's a specific model that has not officially been validated, it's just a matter of uh, using that test kit uh, to go through and you know run run some checks. Uh, a lot of it hardware based, and so um, and with our reason uh, version 1106 recently coming out last week. Uh, that's we've updated the Agile uh, Linux kernel essentially, and that adds adds more and more hardware support. So, uh, but this, yeah, you uh, can see quite a bit what they've got here. This panel PC looks like something that would be really nice in my truck, actually. I know. <laughs> you start designing the Zintegra truck. So, okay, uh, going back to the article here. Um, so, Chris, what are the two that are that are officially supported as a iGel enabled thin client at the moment? Yeah, so we've got we were just talking about the um, the iGL three hundred compact rugged uh, uh, powered thin client, and then there's the iGL two hundred ultra small fanless um, powered thin client. So, if you look on, I'll put this uh, link in the page. Uh, so, on iGel.com, there's a partner ready showcase. Um, and uh, that's, uh, let me put this in the chat for you. So Chris, if I were to translate the two devices, the 300 and the 200 that you just called out uh, from a performance perspective, not from a, not from a, a rugged perspective, but from a performance perspective, what iGel hardware units do those line up with in terms of, um, of uh, specs? Uh, that's a great point. I'm going to, uh, we've got actually, uh, my buddy Ron put together a, um, a spreadsheet where we can kind of compare. Uh, if you give me a second, I'll pull it right up here, live on the blog or on the podcast. So give me a second here. I want to say the uh, smaller thin client 
uh, the IGL200 is probably going to be equivalent to a UD3. And then the other one may be a similar UD3, perhaps UD7. Uh, oh, wow. So give me... So that's, let me pull up. That's pretty That's pretty strong if we're talking about a UD7 equivalent. Yeah, so let me... Do. And, and while you're doing that, uh, let's talk about this last section here where it says thin client features that matter everywhere, uh, passive cooling, uh, you know, eliminating the fan and the moving parts, uh, whether it's, uh, whether you're going to use this device in a, in a clean office or a dirty, dusty um, warehouse somewhere. And, and maybe you don't know. And maybe that's part of the challenge here, too, is you work for a, a company that does industrial stuff, but uh, that device may go on, on the president CEO's desk, or it may go out in the warehouse and nobody knows where it's going to go when. Yeah. I mean, I believe there's stories where we, people found uh, hardware, like they were, they were renovating or something like that. And they put up some drywall and like, where's that computer? <laughs> they found it behind the drywall because it got closed in. Mm -hmm. um, so on logic, I'm looking here. Uh, let me see if I could, uh, I've got this spreadsheet up. So you know, I'll give you a I'm quick go, uh, story. Yeah. I'm looking at this picture here where they've got a fan and a bunch of components covered in dust. Uh, in my world, you know where that's most likely to be found? Um, are you talking about that? Well, well it's, it's, it's a trick question. It's in, it's in my son's uh, bedroom under his desk. That's where I'm going to find the dirtiest, dustiest computer in my house. Ah, uh, yes. I, uh, there's a few places that have not seen the light of day, uh, not necessarily, or even a, a vacuum cleaner <laughs> in a, a long time. So, uh, so it looks like if I filter on the UD3 on logic has, uh, let's see here, one device right. that matches to that. So that's the IGL, let's see, 130. Is that the one we were looking at? Uh, it's a 300 was the first one we called up here. Yeah. It's in the article. Uh, is that a um, one filter? Is that a one at the front of that, or is that an, an I, I-G-L? Okay, I-G-L-3. Yeah. Got it. Uh, but yeah, they've got um, a couple devices that sort of map to the UD3, our most uh, you know middle tier, and then the UD7. Um, so uh, as more devices get validated, the uh, IGEL Ready page that we're looking at here uh, will get updated with more devices as they get through that completed process. But... Um, it's dumb, certain. dumb question, but the IGL mm -hmm. in the model number, does that literally stand for IGL? I'm going to say yes, because it's on logic and then IGL. Uh, I'm not sure why the E's not there, but it probably only had a certain amount of letters to choose from. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would imagine that's, uh, that's, that's the specifics on that. So. Okay. Um, but yeah, so uh, looking here, obviously they solve you know quite a bit of problems, but they uh, can, uh, to my understanding, they can be shipped from factory with iGel installed on it, uh, and then you should have you arrive and then just turn it on and get it set up and and take it from there. So turn it on and either Auto Discovery gets it into your UMS environment or you point it to your UMS if it's uh, you know in the cloud or on you know, online, um, and from there you're you're ready to manage it and. And, and have a good likelihood that it's going to be around um, based on power and the, the ruggedized nature of it for at least a decade. Yeah. So just, uh, I think an overall, you know, a very high level, but certainly uh, if you are uh, looking at uh, some areas where maybe you need a uh, high performing thin client, but also one that'll, you know, stand up to the elements uh, whatever those might be, uh, this is somebody to take a look at. And we're certainly happy to uh, bring in an OnLogic specialist if you want to speak to uh, anything more specific. But yep. Great. Well, Chris, I think that, that kind of wraps it up. Are there, uh, I guess the question, are there other, is OnLogic the only ruggedized uh, vendor you guys are working with, or are there others as well? Well, there, there is one. Um, I would say that they're the only one I know of, but there is an, another vendor. I think they're based out of Germany. They've made uh, devices that are purpose built for clean room environments mm. uh, where, you're, where everybody's wearing white and that, you know, how to go in that type of thing. And so 
Uh, I think the industries they target are very much like uh, pharmaceutical or even like uh, they're working on stuff for going up in space, that type of thing where they need um, similar things. They need a fanless type device, ruggedized, maybe touch screen because they can't really work a keyboard or whatever. And so um, that's the only other one I know of uh, yeah. that doesn't say that maybe other vendors don't have a ruggedized device, uh, but, but on logic uh, is uh, very much focused on that. Maybe we should create devices that are both a computer and an air purifier all at the same time, living in this world of the pandemic and COVID. I mean, not a bad idea. Uh, you could probably, uh, I'm looking here. I mean, on this, I mean, with a USB powered, you could probably just plug it in and have it running and purifying the air while you're running a thin client. It probably doesn't take up much wattage. I say that because I got the two kids in college and they're both living in the same dorm and we had to buy these massive air purifiers because of the claim from everybody, it was that the, uh, the duck, because of the old ducking system that the, uh, there was a lot of germs and mildew and mold and stuff coming through the, uh, coming through the system. So got these big, massive air purifiers running in, in all in their rooms now. I wouldn't doubt that for a minute. Cause I know your kids go to school. So. <laughs> And I don't say that because I'm not a fan. I'm just saying. Yeah. (laughs) All right, sir. Well, I appreciate you joining and uh, covering this topic. And uh, we'll do it again, I guess, next week with Seb on a community podcast. And uh, yeah, Seb who's on LinkedIn now. So LinkedIn Seb. That's his his new nickname for me. From me is LinkedIn (laughs) Seb. Nice. All right. Have a great one, man. All right, Chris. Thanks.